Hello, and welcome to Tap That MTG, the show where we tell you everything we know about magic that's probably wrong, but fun to talk about. I'm Shauna. I'm Leslie. And today we are bringing you another of our deep dive videos where we dive into the Precon Commander decks, and we're going to break down all of the cards in the deck, talk to you about what this deck is meant to do, how to use it wisely, and if you hang around with us until the end, we'll give you some ideas to tweak it and possibly make it even better. So without further ado, Leslie's going to tell us about this, what deck this is, and mm. what our commanders are going to do. All right, so today we're going to talk to you about Squirreled Away. Uh, basically a deck that is all squirrels all the time. Um, <laughs> our commander is Hazel, the Root Bloom. Uh, she is a four mana cost, three, five. She has the ability to tap and pay two life and tap X untapped tokens that you control to add X mana in any combination of colors. So you can use those tokens to tap for mana if you need. Also, at the beginning of your end step, you get to create a token that's a copy of a target token that you control. So it could be a squirrel, could be a anything. There's going to be lots of tokens <laughs> being created. Yeah. Um, maybe a treasure token or a food token. But if you do it to a squirrel token, then instead you create two tokens. So you Ooh. probably want to create squirrels because you get two of them instead of one of them. Um, and you will see that the more squirrels you have, the better things go. This is just a crazy create lots of squirrels, squirrels, tribal, and overrun the world. Um, <laughs> our secondary possibility for a commander is the odd acorn gang, which is adorable as well. Just the name in and of itself. But it's a five mana cost five, five. It has menace. It has trample. It has reach. It's got all the things. Squirrels you control have tap and target squirrel gets plus two, plus two and gains trample until the end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. So what that means, if you have actually is not even going to be unheard of. If you have a hundred squirrels, <laughs> you can tap them all and tap this guy to give one of them plus 200 plus 200 <laughs> and trample. So yeah. it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Also, whenever one or more squirrels you control deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card because as, as if it wasn't good enough, I'll by itself either one of those commanders would be lovely for this deck uh, we're going to talk about it as if hazel was our commander but before we do that what does the deck's <laughs> guts look like um this deck as leslie said has the best mana curve she's ever seen it's uh, so beautiful <laughs> for commander decks it's the perfect shape and everything so we've got uh, seven cards at zero to one 14 at 2, 16 at 3, 12 at 4, 8 at 5, and 5 at 6 plus. So this is a very aggressive deck. Mm -hmm. You're going to be playing this deck fast and be able to get your stuff out very quickly. Uh, the color breakdown, there's 16 multicolor, so that's quite a few. Um, seven colorless, so that's probably our mana rocks and things there are 24 green because we all know the squirrels are mostly green but there's also 15 black because they have a little bit of black splashed in there just because they're little devils mm -hmm. and then we've got um as far as the card types go there are 30 creatures so this is a really heavy deck but surprise surprise it's all about squirrels and 15 sorceries and instances seven enchantments nine artifacts and one planeswalker all these decks from Bloomboro have a Planeswalker in that are really cute and adorable. And um, yeah. And then that's the breakdown of the deck. And Leslie's going to tell us about the formula that we use to evaluate these decks as we go through mm -hmm. the video. So we use a little formula that just kind of tells you how to build a balanced deck. Uh, we figure you should have 15 ramp, 15 removal, 13 card draw, 12 high impact. Those are cards that are going to win you the game and then around 10 that are other cards so they're going to support your theme we figure around 34 35 land any of those sections can go up or down a couple and that would be just fine but that's going to give you a nice balanced deck um of course the more you can put in high impact that do all those other things at the same time the mm -hmm. better but you can't always do that so don't forget your any of those sections so we're going to break these decks down based on those sections and tell you where they are at um, so the first section is what? This is the ramp mana generators section. So the formula calls for 15. The deck only has seven. 
Um, but like we said, uh, this deck is pretty aggressive and pretty low uh, as far as mana cost goes. So you don't need a lot of ramp to be able to play pretty much all of your cards. So the first cards we have are, of course, the typical Arcane Signet and the Soul Ring artifacts. The Signet tapping for one color of any of your color commander's colors. And then the Soul Ring, of course, taps for two colorless. Mm -hmm. And then we have two kind of like artifacts that tap for the Golgari colors. We have Golgari Signet and Talisman of Resilience. So that's just going to get you uh, either both or one of those colors. Uh, you do have some uh, pain that's going to come at you if you're using the Talisman, but it just kind of gets mm. you what you need. Yeah. Then this nice little Wolf Willow Haven. This is one of my favorite cards. It is an enchantment aura that you enchant your land for one and a green. And whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional um, green mana. So it taps for two green or tap, could be whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter which line you put it on, actually. And then mm. for four and a green, you can sacrifice uh, Wolf Willow Haven and create a 2-2 two -two wolfy creature token during your turn only but the art on this one is one of my favorite arts of magic so mm -hmm. yeah yeah those three wolves that you don't really notice until you look hard and then you're yeah. like oh yeah there's three wolves yeah. there. uh gilded goose this is some new art for this one he's just happy mm -hmm. go lucky gilded fun loving goose <laughs> uh for one he's a zero two he's got flying and when he enters the battlefield you get a food token um so then basically you can then sacrifice that food token to add one mana of any color and that's kind of where the the mana ramp comes in and you can also then just create a food token so he just kind of keeps creating mm -hmm. what you need and remember you can create copies of any token so maybe you're creating copies of that food token that you need in order to get mana yeah uh tireless provisioner this is a three two for three uh, two and a green it has landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you get to create a food or a treasure which is pretty amazing actually yeah it's pretty good mm -hmm. next section is card draw and tutors we definitely need to do that in order to win a game so formula mm -hmm. calls for 13 deck has about 10 it's on the borderline of not being that great but a decent idol of oblivion for two you get to draw a card and activate only um, if you have created a token this turn. So uh, <laughs> that might be not so good. However, it does have pay eight and sacrifice it to create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. <laughs> and once you have a token that's a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token, your commander can create a copy of that token. Yeah. Oof. Crazy. Uh, Moldervine Reclamation. This is a really good card to have in this deck. This is for three, a black and a green enchantment that's going to be out there. And whenever a creature you control dies, you gain a life and draw a card. So you could potentially gain quite a few. You're going to have lots of little squirrels running around. You don't mind if they die, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, that's a really good point because we didn't talk about that in the beginning. But mm. this deck has so many tokens and it's not just an aggressive swing fast a million tokens because there are a lot of things in this deck that will take advantage of your things dying, which we'll get to. But that was one of them. As your squirrels die, it's OK if they die because you're going to draw a card and gain life. Mm -hmm. Deadly Dispute is another uh, great card for this deck. For two, an additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice an artifact or a creature, but it's okay if your creature dies because you're going to gain benefits. And mm -hmm. then you get to draw two cards and create a treasure token. So you get two cards and a treasure for sacrificing something yeah. that is then going to do a whole bunch of stuff while you sacrifice it. Yeah. Uh, Morbid Opportunist. This is a 1-3 for two in a black. I've seen this card do a lot of work because whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn, mm -hmm. especially in a commander. Um, there's creatures dying all over the board. You're going to get cards for everybody's turn pretty much. It's pretty amazing. Pl and you can use your abilities, things like sacrificing creatures in on mm -hmm. other people's turns as well so yeah. plum the forbidden uh for two is an instant as an additional ca cost to cast this spell you may sacrifice one or more creatures and when you do copy this spell for each creature sacrificed this way you could sacrifice all your creatures if you wanted and then draw a <laughs> card and lose a life for each of those creatures maybe not all your creatures depends on how many creatures <laughs> nope. you have but you get to draw cards as many times as you want yeah 
Uh, Shamanic Revelation for three and two green. This is a sorcery that says draw a card for each creature you control. Whew, that could be a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's ferocious, so you gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. So mm -hmm. help help you win, uh, get some life back, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm going back to Plum the Forbidden because you oh. lose a life, but if you have Molder Vine out, you gain a life. So it doesn't matter. It yeah. cancels each other out. Yeah. Ravenous Squirrel for one. <laughs> it's a hybrid mana. So that means you can pay either black or green. It's a one, one. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, so food or treasure um, or creature, you get to put a one, one counter on Ravenous Squirrel. Then you can pay three and sacrifice an artifact or creature and you gain life and draw a card. So it's just another little sack outlet, a way to kill your creatures that will get you some benefits. It's just creepy. It's, uh, it's a creepy little squirrel. And Tosky, hand. bearer of secrets. Uh, for, it's a 1-1 one, one little indestructible dude that can't be countered, which is really nice. Uh, for three and a, and a green. And he attacks each combat if able. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. So you've got lots of creatures, swing away and have some of them die, have some of them get in, draw some cards. It'll be it'll be fun. <laughs> you have lots of creatures. It doesn't matter. That's right. That's um, right. Woe Strider enters and you create a zero one one goat creature token. Um, and then you can sacrifice another creature to scry. So now you can use your, sac mm. your sacrifice creature to scry as well, which is fantastic. You can also escape this, which means if it's in your gra graveyard, you can exile four other cards from your graveyard to play it for five. And it escapes with two one one counters on it. So it's a little bigger. Yeah. And then there is Skull Clamp, which is pretty awesome that it's included in this deck. This is a card that's hard to get. Uh, it is a only costs one, and equipped creature gets plus one, minus one, which you're like, why would you do that? But that's because whenever equipped creature dies, you get to draw two cards, and its equipped cost is one. So you're going to put it onto a creature that's going to die as soon as it gets put on, like your little 1-1 one, one squirrels. You want that to happen. So um, it's just a great way to get cards two at a time. Yeah. All right. Now we're on to our removal. A very important <laughs> section in any commander mm -hmm. deck is removal. Formula calls for 15. This deck has 13. So we're right where we need to be there. Binding of the All Old Gods is our first one for four. This is a saga. And so basically what that means is as you cast it, it enters and you do ability number one. Destroy target, non-land permanent, and opponent controls. Then on your upkeep, each turn after no after you no, draw after you step draw. so yeah. on tap up keep draw and then you draw and then you do the second ability on your second turn and then the third ability on your third turn so in this case search your library for forest card and then creature creatures you control gain death touch until the end of turn mm -hmm. swing with all the squirrels <laughs> uh putrefy for one a black and a green this is a simple instant destroy target artifact or creature can't be regenerated get out of here murder yeah and then we have saw in half which is <laughs> new card for three it's an yeah. instant destroy target creature if that creature dies this way its controller creates two tokens that are copies of that creature except their power is half that creature's power and their toughness is half that creature's toughness rounded up each time it's so weird <laughs> yep basically uh... saw it in half and they get two halves instead <laughs> Oh boy. Terra Sunder. This is a great little instant for one in a green that has kicker for one in a black. So that means you can pay the one in the green and the one in the black to kick it and exile target artifact or enchantment. And if the spell was kicked, you get to exile target non-land permanent instead. So you're going to mm -hmm. do an artifact or enchantment, or if you kick it, you get to do a creature or something like a planeswalker or something like that. Excellent. And then we have Wind Grace's Judgment. Uh, it's an instant for any number of opponents. Destroy target and online permanent. That player controls. Simple. Let's get it done. And then we have Casualties of War. This one is for two black and two green. You can choose one or more. So as many as you need. Destroy target artifact. Destroy target creature. Destroy target enchantment. Destroy target land. And destroy target planeswalker. All the casualties. <laughs> All the casualties. And then we have Decree of Pain. This one's an expensive one to play for mm -hmm. eight. It's a sorcery. You destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. And you draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. 
crazy <laughs> amount of draw right there. Yeah. Whenever you cycle Decree of Pain, so you can cycle it instead, all creatures get minus two, minus two till the end of turn. So this is a good way to maybe not destroy everything, but just destroy enough things. So you have some choices there. Yeah. Maelstrom Pulse for one, a black and a green. Destroy target non-land permanent and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent. So mm -hmm. let's say someone's got a bunch of tre treasures or I don't know, anything. You can, multiple copies of stuff. For whatever reason, you can destroy them all. <laughs> yeah. And Swarm Yard Massacre for five. It's a sorcery. Create two 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens then each creature that isn't an insect rat spider or squirrel gets minus one minus one until the <laughs> end of turn for each creature you control that's an <gasps> insect rat spider or squirrel it's so there's wrong. a pretty good chance they're all gonna die except for your dudes <laughs> jeez that's crazy uh chittering witch when chittering witch enters the battlefield create a number of one one black rat uh equal to the number of opponents you have and you can pay one in a black and sacrifice a creature and target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. So you don't have to tap her to do that. So you could be sacrificing a bunch of your little rats and stuff and make something die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the nice thing about minus two, minus two is it kind of gets around that um, indestructible. indestructible because they can't be destroyed. But when they lose their power and toughness, then they are kind of gone. Not so. there. <laughs> haywire might for one uh when it dies you gain two life you can pay a green and sacrifice it to exile target non-creature artifact or non-creature enchantment very useful yeah plague crafter this is a three two when it enters the battlefield each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker each player who can't discards a card so you're mm -hmm. punishing them no matter what yeah and the last one in our removal is skyfish spider gross gross uh for four it's a three three it has reach when it enters you may sacrifice another creature when you do destroy target non-land permanent so basically you can just sacrifice one of your squirrels to destroy anything of theirs um and when skyfish spider dies you may gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard if you do exile the spider from your graveyard so crazy yeah wow. And then we're at our high impact cards. So the formula Fun. calls for 12. This deck has probably 13. Um, it's got lots of great things in it that are going to win you the game potentially. So mm -hmm. one of them is the Maskwood Nexus. Again, this is exciting that they put this card in this deck because this basically says that creatures you control are every creature type. So everything that you have is a rat, is a squirrel is a whatever it doesn't matter even if it says human on it it becomes everything mm -hmm. um yeah and even creature cards that are in your graveyard too in case that's important uh, and you can pay three and tap this thing and create a two two blue shapeshifter creature token with changeling so same thing it's it's a squirrel it's a rat it's whatever you need it to be it's, whatever you need it to that's be. right all right, so here's where we were talking about the cards that are by themselves, okay, they're not super high impact until you put them in a deck like this, where remember you're sacrificing cards all here, right, left, and center. So Poison mm -hmm. Tip Archer is our first one. For four, we have a two, three, it has reach and death touch, and whenever another creature dies, not your creatures, another creature on the any battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So not just target opponent, each opponent loses one life. Poison Tip Archer is so good for this deck. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Nadir's Night Blade, it is a 1-3 for 2 and a black. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. Mm -hmm. So all your little squirrel tokens, rat tokens, all that stuff, when it dies, they're going to lose life and you're going to gain life. Treasures and food as well. Uh... Oh, shoot. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. I forgot about that. It's pretty crazy. Mm. Zulaport Cutthroat for two. It's a 1-1. One, one, and when it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. 
And then the batch bastion of remembrance. It's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you create a one one little human soldier. And whenever a creature mm -hmm. you control dies, each opponent loses a life, you gain a life. Yeah. That's pretty Sorry. crazy. <laughs> so you can imagine even if you just had two of those on the battlefield, now every time you something dies, they lose two life, you gain two life, and it can like someone does a board wipe. No one can do a board wipe because crazy mm -hmm. things will happen. Um, but you might want a board white to happen. So will you have all of them on the battlefield at once? No, probably not. But you'll get more of them as they get rid of them. So that's great. Beastmaster's Ascension was also one that we thought was fairly high impact. For three, it's an enchantment. Mm -hmm. Whenever a creature you control attacks, you may put a quest counter on Beastmaster's Ascension. And so that's whenever a creature. So if you attack with 10, that's 10, right? Mm-hmm. As long as Beastmaster's Ascension has seven or more quest counters on it, creatures you control get plus five, plus five. Yep. And that happens as soon as you declare them as attackers. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that combat. I've Ooh. done that. I've done that many times. <laughs> She's mean like that. <laughs> I am. I like to attack with a lot of things. It's fun. Yep. Um, Garuk Cursed Huntsman. This is our little planeswalker who, when you travel to Bloomborough um, Plain, you're, you become a beautiful, a cute little critter. So Garuk becomes a... Leslie thinks this is... It's a badger. Badger badger, badger. badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom. Badger. It's a badger. It looks so weird. Anyway, <laughs> it's a 5-5. Five, five. Um does not look very happy still which i guess badger makes sense uh this is the good garuk <laughs> he uh, when he you, his zero is create two black and green wolfies um when this creature dies you put a loyalty counter on garuk so that's really nice and minus three is destroy target creature draw a card and minus six which is not hard to get to well i guess it is a little well your wolves have to die which is sad uh, mm. You get an emblem with creatures you control, get plus three, plus three, and have trample. <laughs> but you can create copies of those wolves. That's true. They can live to fight another day. To die but then day. you'll have more of them to die and just swing with abandon, and then you can sacrifice them, right? So Yeah, true. And then you're going to get more. So you're going to be able to get to the emblem. Then you're going to get to the emblem pretty quickly. And you Fast. can have actually more than one emblem of him. Oh, yeah. I've done that before. Crazy. Once. Once. Yeah. yeah. People forget about them and then it's like, what just happened? Uh, <laughs> Belladros Witherbloom is a 4 4 flyer. At the beginning of each upkeep, you get to create a black green pest creature token. Um, and whenever this creature dies, you gain a life and you can pay 10 life and untap all lands Ooh. you control, activate only once per turn. So all that extra life that you've been gaining, you now have Ooh. use for it. Wow. Then there's Chatterfang. They put Chatterfang in this deck. Surprise, surprise. I mean, had to. Uh, <laughs> he's the Squirrel General with Forest Walk, a 3 3. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1 1 green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. Mm -hmm. Oh, so instead of wolves, you're making squirrels. But that's mm -hmm. okay because you can pay black and sacrifice X squirrels, and target creature gets plus X minus x until end of turn what <laughs> yeah this yeah anyway. could be could be that one with forest walk and then you could just unblock yeah. them yeah end raise forerunner for five six seven eight is a seven seven vigilance trample haste and when it enters the battlefield other creatures you control get plus two plus two gain get vigilance and trample until the end of turn <laughs> potential oh, game dear. yes honored dre leader this is a squirrel warrior with trample when it enters put a one my counter on it for each other squirrel and or food you control and whenever another squirrel or food you control enters put a one my counter on this guy he's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger <sighs> and he has trample mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we have this little bat warlock. He's so cute. For Ugh. five, he's a four, no. four with flying. And whenever a creature an opponent control dies, you get to create a blood token. So blood tokens are kind of fun. You can pay one and discard a card and sacrifice this artifact to draw a card. So a little bit of card draw in there with your blood tokens, mm -hmm. which you can copy if you want. And whenever you sacrifice an artifact, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on Moonstone um, Eulogist and you gain one life. So he just can get bigger and remember your food and your treasures are also artifacts that you might be sacrificing. Yeah. Um, and definitely like we were saying with the odd acorn gang that uh, is Does so potentially much. a game winning card as well with medicine trample. Um you're going to make certain one or many squirrels bigger because of other squirrels. It's mm -hmm. just, yeah. 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 Crazy. So now we're on to our support section. Uh, mm -hmm. We recommend around 10. This deck has 18, which is to be expected when you're doing a very heavily themed deck. Of course, it's all squirrels all the time. So there's tons of squirrels <laughs> that are here to support the theme. So Chitter Spitter is our first one at three. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a token. Yay, sacrifice. <laughs> uh, if you do, put an acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. And squirrels you control get plus one, Ooh. plus one for each acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. And you can also create green squirrel tokens with them. So lots of versatility with this one. It's an artifact, so it's going to be a little harder to get rid of. Yeah. And then Squirrel's Nest is a little enchantment that you put on one of your lands for one and two green. And that land can tap and make a one one green squirrel creature token just by yeah. tapping it. So sometimes you don't need your land. Uh yeah. Gorman's Talent. This is a class card. Um, so there's some class cards in the other deck. This one has one as well. So you play it for one and it comes in and during your turn, artifacts you control are foods in addition to their other types and have sacrifice uh, this artifact to gain three hmm. life. So it just kind of makes all your other artifacts food as well. Um, and then you can pay three and level it up to level two and gain the ability whenever you gain life for the first time each turn create a three three green raccoon creature token and then you can level it up again to level three and whenever you gain life for the first time each turn put a one one counter on each creature you control <laughs> oh my gosh uh it's a sword of the week <laughs> sword of the week squeak sorry sword of the squeak <laughs> Sword of the Get Squeak. The, uh, squirrels are not weak, apparently. Um, nope. It is a little equipment that equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control with base power and toughness one. Um, whenever a hamster, mouse, rat, or squirrel you control enters, you may attach Sword of the Squeak to that creature. <laughs> so potentially everything that you have. Oh, well, and that's the nice thing about this deck. It doesn't really use counters it just gives your squirrels or your creatures like with garuk's thing it just kind of gives them plus three plus three so their base power and toughness is still plus one plus one so it counts them mm -hmm. right cash yeah, grab for two is an instant you can mill four <laughs> cards and then you can put a permanent card from among cards milled that way into your hand if you control a squirrel which you will or a return to squirrel card to your hand this way you get to create a food token as well <laughs> Hmm. second harvest this is a uh, cute little new art for this card it's for mm. two and two green an instant that says for each token you control you get to create a token that's a copy of that permanent all the things all the things copied. <laughs> and chatterstorm is another favorite squirrel to a squirrel card for two it's a sorcery create a green one one green squirrel creature token and then it has storm so when you cast the spell copy it for each spell that you cast before it this turn so you want to do it on a turn later on in the game when you have enough mana and cast a few spells and then copy it for mm. however many spells that you cast beforehand <laughs> root cast apprenticeship this is a little sorcery for three and a green that says choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. Mm. Um, so you've, your options are put two one one counters on target creature, create a token that's a copy of a target token you control. Target player creates a one one squirrel. Uh, target opponent sacrifices a non token artifact. So yeah, 
lots of options there. Yeah. Now this one, arguably, I mean, it is support because you never know what you're going to have and what you're going to create, but mm. it can go very wild in this deck. Academy Manufacturer for three, it's a one, three. And if you would create a clue, food or treasure token, instead you create one of each instead. Mm -hmm. And then they're all artifacts that you're going to sacrifice and get benefits <sighs> from. Yeah. Oh, this deck is going to be hard to play against. Yeah. <laughs> Arasta of the Endless Web. It's a 3-5 spider for two and two green little enchantment spider that has reach. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, you get to create a 1-2 green spider creature token Gross. with reach. Gross. Protect yourself from all those darn flyers. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Deep Forest Hermit for five is a one one. This one has vanishing three, which means when it comes in, you're going to put three time counters on it, which essentially gives you four rounds. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you create four one one green squirrel creature tokens and squirrels you control get plus one plus one. So you're going to want to play this when you have enough squirrels to make have a benefit of it. And then you'll have basically four rounds to do amazing, crazy attacky <laughs> stuff yeah uh hazel's brewmaster it's a three four with menace and whenever it enters the battle sorry enters the battlefield or attacks uh exile up to one target card from a graveyard and create a food token foods you control have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with the brewmaster what crazy <laughs> uh it's We're weird. entering Slither territory here, I think. Yeah. Uh, insatiable frugivore. <laughs> Just eats fruit, I guess. That's a little strawberry or berries. Um, oh. For four, it's a two four. When insatiable frugivore enters, create a food token. Then you may exile three cards from your graveyard if you do repeat this process. Um, and does that mean you can repeat it and as many times as you want? Because it would just go back up to the top i don't think so mm. interesting we will look <laughs> that up for you uh yeah. for four sacrifice x foods creatures you control get plus x plus zero and gain menace until the end of turn so <laughs> some good things to do with your food tokens yeah yeah Oof. wow uh nested shambler it's a one one for one black when it dies create x tapped one one green squirrel creature tokens where x is his power so if you're going to put counters on anything, put it on him. <laughs> yeah. So Ogre, Ogre Slumlord also has a trigger on it. So five for a three, three, whenever another non-token creature dies, you may create a one, one black rat creature token. So it doesn't count for your tokens that you've created, but any non-token creatures that die, you get rats for. And then rats you control have death touch, which they can be blockers or you can just send them in and people won't want to want to block them this deck has a lot of triggers you're gonna to have to kind of watch for <laughs> yeah prosperous innkeeper has gotten more triggers here one one when prosperous innkeeper enters create a treasure token and whenever another creature uh you control enters you gain a life so all the tokens that you're making you're gaining life so you're gonna to have to keep track of all that stuff <laughs> yeah and then three mana for a scurry of squirrels for two is a or sorry it's a two two um this one has myriad myriad so myriad is going to happen twice mm -hmm. um so whenever this creature attacks for each opponent that's defending or that defending other than the defending player uh you get to create a token that's a copy of that so essentially whoever you attack gets the better end of the deal because the other two the other people around the table get two coming at them. Um, and then when it deals combat damage to a player, so any one of those, you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Um, squirrel Sovereign, this is a great little squirrel lord, basically a 2-2 two, two for two, and other squirrels you control get plus one, plus one. So, yeah. Whew. Lots crazy. of support. Lots of mm -hmm. squirrel support. We told you. Yep. As far as land goes in this deck, all of the decks from Bloomborough have 38 lands in them. We recommend 34 to 35, especially if it is a lower mana curve. There's some, of course, that if you have a very high mana curve, you want to keep those lands in there. But we think you could probably take some land out in order to tweak this deck, which brings us to our tweaks. So thank you so much for staying sticking around. Um, we have a few suggestions for you. Uh, the first one being Parallel Lives. 
has to go in every token generating mm -hmm. deck. It is a little bit hard to find and get and is a little expensive. But if you have it, it's a great add. So for four mana, it's an enchantment. If an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control, you put twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. So it just doubles the amount of things as if you didn't have enough. Yeah. <laughs> Wildwood Mentor, it's a little 1-1 one, one tree for the scrolls to go in uh, for two and a green. And whenever a token enters the battlefield under your control, you put a one one counter on the tree. And whenever it attacks... Another target attacking creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the tree's power. So the trees and the squirrels fighting together. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? Yep. We also thought Lolf would be maybe a good one to add. She's a spider queen, another planeswalker. So for she comes in as a four loyalty. Uh, she costs five to cast. And whenever a creature you control dies, you get to put a loyalty counter on the spider queen so again taking advantage of those things dying um you can pay zero draw a card and lose a life you don't need life you're going to be gaining so much life it doesn't matter and then you can minus three to create two two one black spider creature tokens if you need more tokens the nice thing about these ones is they have menace and reach but if you get to her minus eight ability you get an emblem that whenever an opponent is dealt combat damage by one or more of your creatures, uh, if that player lost less than eight life this turn, they lose life equal to the difference. So <laughs> they're going to lose at least eight if uh, they haven't lost yeah. eight. So it just yeah. kind of gets an emblem. Yeah. Uh, Massacre Girl, this is a good 4-4 four, four for three and two black, taking advantage of this whole death stuff has menace uh, when it enters the battlefield each other creature gets minus one minus one till end of turn whenever a creature dies this turn each creature other than this one gets minus one minus one till end of turn so it just keeps going until everything is dead pretty much mm -hmm. this is everyone. the one exactly the one to use when nobody will do a board wipe because you have all of your things on the battlefield and yeah. they're all going to die and you're like well guess what i'm going to do my board wipe instead <laughs> right Another one in that vein is Meat Hook Massacre. When it enters the battlefield, each creature gets minus X, minus X until the end of turn. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. Of course, you choose what X is um, up in the mana cost. And whenever a creature your opponent control dies, you gain one life. So they're losing life. You're gaining life. You choose how, what the power and toughness is that they're going to lose to get rid of what you need to get rid of and hopefully kill everything. So you mm -hmm. take advantage of those death triggers. Oh, we have this guy in there already. Did we? Or he's in the other deck? Oh, yeah, he's in the other deck. We checked that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bloodroot Apothecary. This is a card from the another commander deck, but from this set, that's a squirrel. And he should go in here, too. He has Toxic 2. And so Toxic is that when players are dealt damage by this uh, creature, they also get two poison counters and a player with 10 or more poison counters loses the game so they're not going to want to get hit by this guy he's a 3-3 but when he enters you and target opponent each get a creature a treasure token so that's nice being so nice to them but what it says here is whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-creature token that player gets two poison counters Ugh. so this could be pretty powerful if you're playing against somebody who does treasures or clues they're You're just die. trying to be nice. They're going to die with this guy. <laughs> yes, we wanted to look for all the squirrels for you that mm. weren't in this deck that might be good. So the next one is Camellia, the Seed Miser. She is a three mana cost, three, three. She has Menace and she gives all your other squirrels Menace because why not? And whenever <laughs> you sacrifice one or more food, you create a one, one green squirrel, to squirrel oh. token. Like, it's like this card was made for this deck. Obviously, it was in the same set, but they can't give you all the good stuff. That's why you always look mm -hmm. in the same set for things that have the same, like, abilities. So yeah. also for two, you can forage and put a 1-1 counter on each other squirrel you control. Ooh. She's going to do Yikes. some work for you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> squirrel mob. It's a 2-2 two -two for one and two green. Gets plus one, plus one for each other squirrel on the battlefield. <laughs> Oh, God. Crazy. Yeah. Thorn Vault Forager. He is adorable, this little guy. You can tap him for mana. 
You can tap him and forage and add two mana of any combination of colors. So why wouldn't you do that? To forage, <laughs> however, you must exile three cards from your graveyard or sacrifice a food. So there's some, some, but I mean, two mana. Or <laughs> you can pay four and tap him and search your library for a squirrel card. What? Reveal it and put it on <laughs> into your hand, then shuffle. So it's a tutor as well. What? And you don't even so have to good. tap it and sacrifice it. You could just do that as many times Whenever as you want. Whenever you need to go get, hey, I'm going to go get this squirrel now. So put that in there. <laughs> totally. Um, Valley Rock Collar. This is a little one three menace squirrel that's from the set as well. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life for X is the number of other squirrels, bats, lizards, and rats you control. <laughs> he has to attack, right. but he's going to be all buffed up and everything. So right. all right. All right. Enough with this squirrel shenanigans. We yes. have a Zoni, a Thousand Eyes, <laughs> two and two black and two green for a two three. It has undergrowth. Whenever um, it enters the battlefield, you get to create a one one black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. So again, creating some tokens and then you can pay two and sacrifice another creature and gain one life and draw a card. So another good way to get a sack outlet and be able to sacrifice your creatures to then do other triggers for you. Mm -hmm. Blood Artist, if you have one floating around, is a good little card to add to this if you're going to go with the whole sacrificing things. Whenever it or another creature dies, target player loses a life and you gain a life. So that's when they kill things as well. So it's a great one to have. Yeah. And perhaps you have giant squirrels and you don't want them to die. So <laughs> because you're just going to swing in and kill everyone with actual combat damage. So in Groot's Wake. Uh, so for seven and two, you can destroy all creatures you don't control and all plane walk planeswalkers you don't control. Just wipe out the board and then swing away. And if you're finding that you need a little bit more card draw and you have lots of creatures to work with you could try priest of the forgotten gods in this deck it's not too expensive not too hard to find and you can tap her and sacrifice two other creatures for your whole death things but um, any number of target players each lose two life and have to sacrifice a creature as well so she's got removal on it plus you get two black mana so you get some ramp on there plus you get to draw a card so yeah you get a lot from this card just by sacrificing two creatures so Anytime you can say plus you get plus you get, you know, it's a good card. <laughs> yeah. um, so Ashnod's Altar would be a good one for this deck as well. You remember when we were talking about our ramp and mana generators, there was very few in this. We were very low. Ashnod's Altar will help you with that, but it will also take advantage of you sacrificing your creatures. So not only do you get to do some mana ramp, you can sacrifice those creatures to really start getting that engine going for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that brings us to the end of our tweaks and the end of our video. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Let us know what you think of all the squirrel craziness, um, what you would do to the deck, that, uh, any questions you might have, that sort of thing. So feel free to talk to us about that. And that's it for this time. We'll see you next time. And in the meantime, tap those magic cards and have fun doing it. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone.